How does a person go from being an insecure third grader in 1982 to the owner and chief host of the world's first live church tech training network? Well, that's our question today. again to another episode of the Eternity Changers show. Now, today's a little bit different from all the historic shows as well as different from the uh, interview shows that I've been doing in the past. I wasn't able to secure the interview that I really wanted to get this time, so I thought instead I would tell you my story. So if you have any questions or comments, head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact or drop me a line on email, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com or over on Twitter, Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F or if you're more of a phone person, I've got you covered there too, one 763 that's one 877 echo Any of those ways will get you in touch with me. Before I start, I would like to uh, thank those of you who have helped make this show and the other shows possible. So thanks to all those who are donating on Patreon. If you're interested in helping make this show and all the shows on the churchtechcast.com network happen, head over to patreon.com slash Cliff. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. For as little as a dollar a month, or as much as you like, you can help make free church tech training available to churches all over the world. Thanks a lot for your support. So, let me tell you my story. I wasn't always who I am before you. Of course, no one really is who they are at any given moment from birth. But I think my story is an interesting one because it's sort of unusual how I got from where I was to where I am. In November of 1982, I gave my life to Christ. And it changed me. My concerns for people changed. My outlook on people changed. But I was in third grade, so what was I going to do? Well, uh, in my church, the answer was not much. So I just continued going to church and being a good kid, you know, what you're supposed to do. And I just kept on doing that until um, summer of 1988. Now this was right after I was in 8th grade. I was getting ready to go into ninth grade and I went to youth camp with my, uh, with my church. That's where I really heard God's voice probably the most intently up to that point. And I felt like he was saying, Paul, I need the best hours of your life. Now up before up until then, before that time, I'd wanted to be an astronaut. Now, I don't know exactly why I thought that was a good idea, but that's what I wanted to do. And still, it's a little dream of mine to go into space someday. But I knew that I needed to do what God wanted me to do. So I decided to do it. Now, you might be thinking, in 1988, no one knew what the internet was. Computers were primitive at best. Video streaming online didn't exist. Social media didn't exist. Basically, none of the things that I did existed. 
So maybe that's why when I felt like God wanted me to do something, I didn't know what it was. I just knew I should do it. So I proceeded to do the best that I could to figure out what I should do. So in the fall of 1992, I went to college, and I thought for sure that God wanted me to do contemporary Christian music. Now, what you should know about me is I'm not all that musical. I can sing, okay. I can play the guitar, okay. But I'm not great. I'm not even really average amongst musicians. I'm sub-average. Sub but it was the only thing that I could think that I could do that was anything along the lines of what I felt like God was calling me to do. Well, along the way in college, I started doing philosophy, and that was my major. I had a minor in English literature, and I figured that maybe God wanted me to be a professor in a Christian college or do Christian philosophy, something like that. But you can't really do that with just a bachelor's degree. So I decided to go on to seminary. Now, in the meantime, I met the girl who would eventually become my wife. And so she was very supportive of this idea that I would be doing something ministerially focused. So first, uh, right after seminary, fall of 96, I went to the seminary that made sense for me to go to. It wasn't a good experience. They'd had a um, doctrinal shift from what I was raised to believe to something which, while still classical and in the foundations of that denomination, were just not aligned with my heart. So, I went to a different seminary, Asbury Seminary. And this is where my life took a turn. Most people that do videography and technology, they figure that out in college, maybe a little bit before. And um, I've got a friend that went to Cal Arts for film school. Not me. I picked up video in seminary. You see, Asbury Seminary at the time was the most technologically advanced seminary in the country. They had video production, they had uh, centralized AV equipment that would send audio and video content to any classroom on campus. They had projectors in all the classrooms. And in 1997, that was amazing. Today, not so much, but back then, pretty amazing. Most of the professors used PowerPoint. I'm sure now they use something like ProPresenter or something like that. But this was astounding to me. So I took a class right after I got married. Christina and I got married in 1999. So I took a class in the spring semester of 2000 called Technology and Ministry. And I noticed something about myself. I noticed that while I had trouble completing assignments in all my classes. In fact, in one class, I was a full semester late on a paper. I noticed that while I had trouble completing those assignments, I had no trouble whatsoever completing assignments for my technology and ministry class. In fact, right after class, I would go home and work on my homework. This was new for me. Normally, I would begrudgingly do it right before it was due. With this, I'd try and get it done as soon as possible. Well, a friend of mine was the video student worker, and I heard that he was leaving to go to a pretty out-on-the-edge church and do video there. So I asked him, Chris, what does somebody have to do to get your job here? And he goes, I don't know, I guess you'd ask Doug. So I bumped into Doug in the technology and ministry class, so I bumped into him quite on purpose, uh, once again 
and said, hey, I hear Chris is leaving, is, is that position open? He said, well, yes, it is. Let me talk to your professor. So he talked to my professor who apparently thought that I was good enough to give me the job. So they found, they hired me before they could find someone who's actually qualified. And that's where I started actually doing video work. And so I helped Doug do anything that he needed to do. I would set up lights. I would uh, clean the studio. Anything related to the video. Uh, during the chapel, I would run the cameras and the switcher because we had robotic cameras. That was my start in video. Now, in the fall semester of 2000, I had a class called um, Servant as Leader. And in Servant as Leader, we visited Quest, my church. Now, at the time, I wasn't looking for a church, but things made it to where I needed to find one. So when I went and heard all that they were doing, I said to my wife, we've got to take a look at this church. So we did. And when we did, we fell in love. And that's the church I've been at since, with one exception. After I graduated seminary in December of 2001, I was unemployed for a while. And then I started working at Radio Shack. And that was not a good experience. Nothing against them, just retail wasn't for me. Although electronic retail, okay, but retail in general, not for me. So I started looking for uh, church technology jobs. And I got a job in 2002, uh, which my oldest daughter was born in 2001. So I hauled my wife and my baby daughter, who was about one at this time, to Virginia for a job being a, the creative director at a church. Well, that didn't work out at all. There were issues that... In retrospect, I could have fixed, but I really just didn't know how to at the time. So that didn't work out, but when I got back to Kentucky, I found that our local NBC affiliate was hiring, so I applied for that job. And I worked about a year in local television and learned a lot. Now, I already had a basis of video. I'd been doing it for three years at that time, but it just really helped me to work in live production. Now next, uh, after that, I briefly managed a clothing store, again retail, not for me, before I eventually ended up working at a, a company that sets up AV tech for meetings. And that was okay, but just the schedule wasn't for me. Then I moved on to a company that did whole house audio video equipment and I worked in tech support and they actually paid a decent wage although not as much as I could have gotten paid in other situations. It was still something that I was good at and something that in the back of my mind I knew would help me in my mission. So I worked there and worked there. Well, eventually they decided with the economic downturn to downsize and move everyone to the much cheaper state, California. You might notice I was being a little sarcastic there. For some reason they decided to move everyone to California but not do any pay raises. So I couldn't see how I could live on the same money I lived on in Kentucky in California. So I didn't even consider that. But they offered me a generous severance package and what they called a pay-to-stay bonus so that I would stay for three months before I left. So with that I had some money to start TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Now I didn't know exactly what I was going to be doing. I thought I would just be speaking and doing consulting for churches. But I really didn't have my name out there. 
So I did a lot of freelance work and whatever I could do to help make ends meet. By this time, my wife had a decent job, so it was a struggle, but we made it work. And I always felt guilty for doing what I really wanted to do, which was more podcasting. More podcasting and more um, blogging, just more to invest in the church. Because that wasn't bringing in any money. You see, since 2005, or was it 2006? I think 2006. Since July of 2006, I'd had Techno Babble, my first podcast. And I really wanted to invest more time and effort into that, but it seemed like a waste of effort, a waste of energy. So I really didn't. Well, Tech Help for Churches became available in... I guess, 2013. So I decided, well, I want to do more podcasting. I'm going to take that. So Jeremy, the original host of that show, generously gave it, the theme music, the graphics, etc. to me. So now I had two podcasts. Doing those podcasts, I attracted the attention of a few different live streaming hosts who offered me free bandwidth and a free connection on their servers. So I started using them, and the churchtechcast.com network was formed. I registered the domain, and I started doing these shows. And that's what I've been doing for the last year. So you might be thinking, Paul, that sounds kind of straightforward, kind of easy. What challenges did you face? Well, let's talk about a few of the challenges. First, I was afraid that I didn't have any business doing this. I was afraid that I didn't know what I was doing. I was afraid no one would let me do what I felt like I was meant to do. Secondly, I had insecurity. I felt like I didn't know anything more than anyone else. Why, why would I do this? So I let that voice stop me. And thirdly, I had a family. I had a wife and two kids by this point. I don't want them to starve. I don't want us to become street people. I don't want etc., etc., etc. So all these fears kept creeping up. But when it was the right time, The fears were things that I overcame. And so I started doing what I'm doing. And while the the money isn't there, I'm still having trouble making ends meet. It's just kind of incredible that I get to do what I get to do. And I get to go out and change eternity. So how about you? Does any of my story resonate with you? Is anything true in that that you think, Paul, I'm exactly in that spot? Please leave a comment below, and we'll talk about it. So until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.